Hi, welcome to the startup process. Now we all know and love Mickey Mouse, don't we? Well, there is a lot behind Mickey and Walt Disney that meets the eye. Do you know that Walt Disney is one of the most successful companies? Walt Disney has grown through creativity and innovation, which led it to be able to compete against large firms. Their strategy focuses on innovation in the development of products they produce to maximize their growth. In this video, we will be talking about the rise of Walt Disney, the man behind the company, and the company itself. Disney has been using product differentiation as its generic strategy by offering unique products. For example, they entertain every other person in the world. From having movies and shows for children, females and males, they are in the hearts of everyone around the world. They have presented quality and uniqueness in their content. They innovated as time passed by to compete with other brands and companies around it. They have Walt Disney Imagineering Research and Development Incorporated, which works immensely to ensure the uniqueness of entertainment experiences. Their uniqueness has helped them achieve industry leadership. Walt Disney began his career working for others with various creative talents. It was 1919. He was looking to work as an artist, and that is when he found work at Pessman Rubin Commercial Art Studio. He met Ube Eworks there. At the start of 1920, both of them were out of a job and decided to open up their studio. The idea failed, and they started doing animation at Film & Co. They also started working on side projects. Those grew into laughograms, and then they turned it into a business. But then their business ended in 1923, and that is when Walt left for Hollywood. Walt started Disney Brothers Studio in Hollywood by taking help from his brother Roy. The company was working for Universal Pictures, and then they found out that their animators were hired away by one of the people at Universal. And that is when Walt decided to work for himself. He decided to deliver his films directly to the distributors. And that is how it began. Walt assembled a new team so that they can work with iWorks on the new characters. The first two of their films weren't hits, but the third one, Steamboat Willie, was a massive success. Walt Disney came up with the first color cartoons and the first feature-length film as well. There were times when they were in debt, but they continued making masterpieces like Fantasia, Bambi, and Cinderella. Walt set up their distribution company and started producing high-margin nature documentaries. Walt had huge visions, and little by little, he achieved them all. He had a vision of the ultimate amusement park, the happiest place on Earth. He didn't have enough money for it, but he made it happen. He took a loan from his life insurance. He set up another company that had merchandising rights to his name. He offered to create TV series for a TV network. All his hard work and strategy paid off and in 1955, Disneyland opened, and it turned out to be a huge success. The gross income grew from $27 million to $70 million. Merchandising, expansion, and branding proved to be behind the huge success of Walt Disney Productions. Walt died in 1966, and Disney started to struggle. In the 1980s, the company was considered to be undervalued in terms of brand assets. But then, in the 1990s, the stock grew and Disney became the largest entertainment empire in the world. No doubt, if you can dream it, you can do it. The story of Walt's life is a true reminder of if we dream something, we must keep on working hard to achieve it. Disneyland offered a huge number of attractions for families, and it was none like the theme parks earlier. Another Walt Disney World was opened in Orlando in 1971, and it had tremendous numbers of visitors. In 1992, Disneyland Paris opened up in France. In their first year, they had more than 11 million visitors. Merchandising also played a huge role in the success of Walt Disney. Fans across the world wanted a souvenir of Disney's magic. 
they now have over 800 Disney stores worldwide. From pens to dolls, they sell almost everything with their name on it. In 2006, Disney bought Pixar for $7.4 billion. It was a huge step to grow their empire. And to further increase its empire and to have a better place in the entertainment industry, Disney bought Marvel for $4 billion. The action-packed storylines alone with superhero characters led to the increase in Disney's reach since male viewers increased. With all of this happening, Disney continued to make great films. The Pirates of the Caribbean made a huge success at the box office. Alice in Wonderland won two Oscars. Disney was expanding in every way possible. Disney also started creating sequels and prequels for big hitters. Frozen 2 came after the huge success of Frozen. They also started working on the revamped versions of the classics. The reimagined version of Dumbo was released in 2019, followed by many other revamped movies. Disney Plus was released to the world on November 12, 2019. It came with a bang by streaming new Star Wars series and hundreds of Disney movies from Disney's century-long history. It was a huge success, and now there are over 100 million paid subscribers. Disney became the number one trending topic around the world. Disney Plus turned out to be a huge competition for Netflix. They launched their subscription for $6.99 a month. Disney has streaming rights to platforms like Netflix, and they have a fee of around $150 to $180 million every year. This leads us to the question that, why would Disney spend so much to build technology infrastructure to launch their platform? Well, that was all part of their huge strategy to become a massive technology company, and no doubt, they succeeded. You must have heard about Coca-Cola trying to acquire Disney. So what's the story? In 1995, Walt Disney enlisted Coca-Cola to help them finance the construction of Disneyland. And in return, Coca-Cola became a soft drink supplier in California Park, followed by Walt Disney World in Florida. They both attract millions of guests every year. This gave more and better quality brand exposure to Coca-Cola. The visitors could also create new variants by mixing classic Coca-Cola flavors with fresh fruits. When Star Wars were released, it was announced that Disney's new Star Wars land would be selling Coke products. These won't look like the glass bottles, but they will look like the thermal detonator. Coca-Cola and Disney are publicly traded companies. They don't have one single owner. These shares might be owned by one another, but Coke does not own Disney. Disney also makes a large majority of revenue from merchandising theme park tickets and advertising on media networks like ESPN and ABC. Netflix doesn't have any of this, and they are constantly finding new TV shows. Disney doesn't have to invest billions into a streaming service. They look forward to making a direct relationship with their customers. Disney made a huge move by releasing the remake of Mulan on Disney+. The cinemas were closed due to the pandemic at that time. The subscriber had to pay an additional $29.99 on top of their standard fee to watch the film. This resulted in a 68% spike in Disney Plus downloads. It was a massive profit to Disney. Disney has been around for a century since 1923. They have seen the growth of cinema, television, and now they are streaming. They started having a direct relationship with consumers that they never did earlier. They also relied on third parties to provide them information about box office success or how well their TV show performs. But now, with Disney+, Plus, they can launch their shows to the world and instantly see the response of the viewers. They now have a better insight into what their viewers like and what they don't. Disney works immensely on their product development. Whenever they release a movie, they also release merchandise along with it. This generates more profits from around the world. Their products are unique, which also adds up to product development. Market penetration also plays a huge role in the growth of Disney. This increased sales of the products that are existing in the market. 
they also use diversification to support their strategy for business growth. They develop new business to reach different areas to reach more people. It also benefits new business operations. It has been over a hundred years since the first Mickey Mouse character was sketched, and since then, the brand is all set to fight against what comes in its way. The success of Disney is truly inspiring. They innovated and evolved with time and survived the challenges with immense hard work. We hope you liked this video. Do let us know about your favorite movie of Disney. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Till then, see ya.